You're welcome back. It's still breakfast on Plus TV Africa and right now we want to talk about health and the, the thing we're going to be looking at is why HPV vaccines matter in preventing cervical cancer. We're lucky to have a doctor here in the house. Dr. Fejiro Chinye Nwoko is the GM CEO Nigeria Solidarity Support Fund. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Mm. Let's begin with what uh, HPV vaccines are before we go into other issues. Okay. HPV vaccine are the vaccines that help prevent HPV infection. And H HPV is human papilloma virus. The HPV virus is uh, one of the leading causes of cervical cancer in women. It is a virus that infects the mucous membranes and the skin, and it results in genital wax and cervical cancer. It's one of the, is the most common sexually transmitted infection, and it's oftentimes asymptomatic until it causes a disease. So you can't know just by looking that you, a woman has HPV um, virus. Um, cervical cancer, is the second highest um, cancer in Nigerian women. It is recorded that over 60% of women that have cervical cancer die of cervical cancer. And it is common, it's um, HPV virus is presently occurring in one in four Nigerian women. So about 25% of Nigerian women are infected with the virus. And about 60 million Nigerians are at risk as women, Nigerian women, are at risk of HPV, especially women between the ages of 15 to 39. Several factors um, account for this, um, such as early um, intercourse, early intercourse in a girl child, multiple sexual partners, um, lack of access to health facilities, and um, things like cultural beliefs result in this. Um, um, in this magnitude of HPV and the spread of HPV. And we know that a lot of the new cases of HPV now are found among girls and women in rural community. So it is very important that we take this as a serious health risk and prevent it by rolling out the HPV vaccine. So the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, which is the agency in charge of vaccinations in Nigeria, are set to roll out the HPV vaccine for the girl child ages 9 to 14 years from next week in Nigeria. And NSSF is supporting in the raising awareness for that rollout and encouraging girls and parents to ensure that their girls get these vaccines that can prevent HPV infection, reducing the burden of care for cervical cancer in Nigeria. Yeah, <clears throat> let me just understand, I'm not a doctor, but mm. you said it's sexually transmitted, yes. yet it's a, it is a case for girls or for yes. women. Yes. What happened to the boys? How is it sexually transmitted if the boys don't have it? Very beautiful question. So the boys can have or have the infection but they don't have the disease. So they are carriers, but it well, doesn't result that's, in that's, the disease because again, they don't have, they don't result, it doesn't result in the disease <coughs> called cervical cancer because they don't have a cervix. So they are carriers and they need to also be vaccinated. But currently this vaccine, this first um, rollout of the HPV vaccine by the government mm -hmm. is for the girls. Um, at, at the second or the um, subsequent rollout, we would give to the boys. We we sort of triaging with the highest risk. The highest risk for now is the girls, and then we would, of course, we need to stop the transmission from the boys. Oh, okay. Now, um, who is it that can access this uh, vaccine? Uh, I'm talking. We know it's the girls that you are concentrating on, but what is, do they do they have a, an age limit or something? Mm -hmm. Can a full-grown woman have it, or it has to be a child or a girl of ad adolescent age? Okay, so um, we said that the peop most people that are at risk are the women between ages 15 to 39, at risk for HPV. So those age group pre and during the age group can get the vaccine and they can get the vaccine if you are above 14 you can get the vaccine but at a cost to you but this 
current rollout is at no cost to the girl child because it's born, the cost has been borne by the government. So, and it's to um, vaccinate the girl child earlier on before they become at risk for um, HPV um, infection. So it is between ages 9 to 14. But any woman um, because we all fall at risk, can get the vaccine. The vaccines are readily available in health facilities, so they can go and get the vaccine. But this current age is because we don't want um, um, finances to be an impediment to getting the vaccine and protecting the girl child. Mm. Okay, so you're talking about the present rollout. How long will it take? Is it for... 12 months, people do, do they need to rush to go get it, or it's going to be there for a very long time? Um, this, this parent rollout is going to be there for a long time, but currently it's going to start um, next week and it's going to be there for the next one month. But um, I think subsequent rollout will, will increase on other age groups and other gender. So for this current one, it's starting and it's for women. And until they, we mop up those girls, it will not stop. So it's going to be continuous. It's not, um, I don't, it, there's no need to rush. And it will be taken to girls at where there are schools, you know, communities, at home. So it's not a thing of curing in the facility. It's going to be um, at the doorstep of the girls. It's yeah, well, but I, I think it's, mm. it's important for them to rush. Let yeah. them rush. Because <laughs> the more you stay away, the yes. more you are at risk. Yes. You never know where you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. But apart from being sexually transmitted, is mm -hmm. it possible to get it some other way? No. It has to it's be a sexually, sexually transmitted virus. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. How would you measure the level of success of uh, uh, administering this vaccine so far? You know, in previous rollouts, if there were, there were mm -hmm. or in previous uh, um, interventions that you've mm -hmm. had? Yeah. How would you so the virus has an efficacy of over 60%. Um, worldwide, um, so the, virus the, or vaccine? the vaccine, <laughs> excuse <laughs> me, has an efficacy of over sixty percent. So it is, um, it is efficacious. It is, it, it can prevent the the. No, I, I'm not infection. even worried about the efficacy yes. of the vaccine. I'm okay. worried about the the response the, of the people oh, to, the optic to, to, okay. to getting it. So for right. the optic, um, well, um, other countries are very different from Nigeria. This is the first time it's being rolled out in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we, we, if we have anything to go by, we'll go by the rollout of other vi vaccines in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In other countries, they have different beliefs, they have different culture, they have different health-seeking behavior. Nigeria, we are peculiar. Um, we are currently also struggling with routine immunization for children that mm -hmm. has been in existent for a long time. We still have um, barriers, vaccine hesitancies that, that has led to the poor optic of routine immunization. So if we go by that, we have a lot of work to do to get, make sure that the girl child gets the HPV va vaccine. So um, it is something that has been taken note of by the government and by partners, and it's something that all the lessons that we've learned in previous rollouts of different vaccines, we're putting it in place, and that's why I said that it is now a community rollout, not just a health facility rollout. We're going to the communities, we're coming to the media, we're raising awareness, and NSSF, um, which I represent, is raising awareness for this vaccine by, ha by launching a youth-led campaign. And that's why we're here to speak about it today. We are using all media, social media, um, traditional media, um, public health professionals, health facilities, every media, because we know that there is that resistance for vaccines in country. But in your experience, what has been the challenge like? What, what, are, what have been the greatest challenges in trying to evangelize the people to accept vaccines, and especially this one? Um, I, in my experience, I would say is mistrust. I think there's no trust for um, the government and there's no trust for um, public health professionals, there's no trust for maybe okay. the medical professional. Um, um, and it's as a result of several other things like our cultural beliefs. So sometimes cultural beliefs are at variance to medical practices. Um, religious beliefs are at variance to medical practices. So there is this mistrust, there's this suspicion. There's also poor health-seeking behavior. People just don't 
um, go to the hospital when they are sick. They believe in just self-medicating. They believe in so, that Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there, there are all f several factors why yeah. is, uh, there is hesitancy. But, you know, with education um, and educating people and behavioral change, it takes time. It takes consistency. It takes um, knowledge transfer. And then it takes time. And we are here to make sure that we bridge every knowledge gap so that it's easy for people to make decisions that are good for their health. Let's just see the gravity of this cervical cancer. Uh, first of all, if it's full-blown and you, see, you say uh, you may not notice it until it's full-blown, if it is full-blown, is it still uh, treatable? Of course, it is treatable, but the success rate of treating cancer, as we know, you know what it's like, right? Um, cancer... Um, cancer survival rates are not very great, especially at least in Nigeria. In, at least especially in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Well, even all the world is not, um, especially when not detected early. So again, it depends on how early was it detected before it had spread to other parts of the body. Then, you, um, then what is the in terms of what what are um, are they able to pay for cancer treatments? Cancer treatments are expensive. Mm -hmm. Do we have health insurance to cover cancer treatment? So the burden on the on the health on the health system is a huge financial burden. And that's why it's important to prevent. Mm -hmm. Treatment is possible. Treatment is available. Treatment is expensive, and the outcome of the treatment. Um, you know, there's no mean, guarantee there's you no can guarantee. survive it. I, yeah. I just wanted it to go out there that uh, it, prevention, like they say, is better than cure. Uh, so why not we prevent it now? So uh, the plan for this rollout is to reach a target audience of uh, about how many? For now, the rollout is to reach um, all the girls within this age group, 9 to 14. In 9 Nigeria. to 14? Yes, in Nigeria. That's the We don't have a limit. Um, the rollout is to reach all, but we know that from previous experience, we will not get all now, and that's why the rollout is staggered. We would will continue phase two and phase three and continue mopping up the people that haven't gotten the vaccine. The vaccine that is being rolled out now is just is a is a uni dose vaccine, so you get one dose and that is all. So again, sometimes because vaccines have multiple doses, people get tired of coming back to take another shot. But this is just one shot, and, and Nigeria waited to get this one shot so that we don't have fallout rates from completion of the vaccine. So a mother comes to the clinic to get yes. to give uh, the child mm -hmm. that vaccine, yes. and she goes empty-handed. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, a young mm -hmm. mother, maybe mm -hmm. of 25, mm -hmm. 20, 25, mm -hmm. comes with uh, a child, mm -hmm. and then he does, she doesn't get anything. Mm. I'm oh, just thinking. Oh, so, okay. anyway, there's, mm. there are opportunities for yes. that person next. Yes, the next yes, and the next rollout. Definitely. So, when is this next rollout that we're expecting? Oh, we're not very certain now. I wouldn't want to put a date to it, but it's going to be, we, we will learn from the failures or success of this rollout and then we will strategize for the next one. Right okay. now it has not been fixed but if we go by how we've done several rollouts it's usually subsequent. It's usually subsequent. Um, it follows very closely like mm -hmm. the COVID vaccine. It follows very closely so it will follow closely. Okay. Well um, we, I, we are part of the system mm -hmm. that you use mm -hmm. to do your, let me still use the word evangelism. Mm -hmm. So if we were to talk to people mm -hmm. on your behalf, mm -hmm. what should we be telling them? Okay, first is that what you can do is help raise awareness for this vaccine uptake. And like I've told you, we struggled with vaccine uptake in Nigeria from polio vaccines to hepatitis B vaccines. Every kind of vaccine we struggled in Nigeria because there are a lot of deep-seated mistrust for modern medicine, if I'll put it that way. And, and this to say that it, other parts of medicine have also suffered, you know, not just vaccination. But what I will say to you is to encourage the public to raise awareness. And one way to raise awareness is to join the NSSF campaign that we have launched for the HPV vaccine. And this campaign is an awareness to action campaign. It is on our website at www.nssf forward slash hpvvcontest. 
It is a contest calling on Nigerian youths. And why we are saying Nigerian youths is because um, we have over 60 million Nigeria falling into the age category of 15 and 39. So we want to target those people to join voices with you in raising awareness that these vaccines are preventive and they prevent diseases that are high burden diseases, cancer, um, cervical cancer, high burden diseases. They prevent death from these diseases. So it's better to get the vaccine. So we want them to raise awareness. Join us, join the contest, NSSF contest, awareness to action contest. Go on our website and see how you can join and lend your voice. Be a change maker. Don't just sit be a change maker, advocate, because it could be your sister, it could be your niece, it could be your nephew, you know, that eventually may need this intervention. So please join, join us and raise awareness. Okay. So was that for me or for the Nigerian populace? Okay. Talk to the Nigerian populace to wrap up. <laughs> okay. If you're Nigerian um, and you want to help advocate for a great cause, I want you to join us to advocate for HPV vaccine for the teenage girl child by joining our contest, the Awareness to Action contest, via the website www.nssf forward slash HPVV contest. I say that again, www.nssf forward slash HPVV contest to raise awareness for this vaccine. Every girl child needs to be vaccinated with HPV vaccine that has a high potential of preventing HPV infection and cervical cancer. Thank you. Okay, whenever we hear cancer, we know how dangerous that can be. So this is a clarion call. Everybody needs to be um, uh, concerned about uh, spreading the gospel as it is and then make sure that everybody keys into it but let me just point this out she was saying NSSF in case you didn't get the alphabets right N for Nigeria then as solidarity support fund so when you go to the website that is the NSSF that she was talking about and then it is HPV vaccine that's why she was calling hpvv i'm sure of that so go to the website see how you can join in the campaign and make sure that our women are safe women from cradle to to the grave let them be safe because they're on the world <laughs> okay thank you so much dr Fejuro, thank for you for coming having on me. the show this morning thank you. and uh, we've been talking with dr Fejuro chinye woko gm ceo of nigeria solidarity support fund and uh, we're calling on every nigerian to join in this campaign and this eventually is how we're going to wrap it up on the show this morning until we meet again same time on monday my name is nyamgul agaji bye for now